I thought I would just show uh, that I uh, got the gel coat. I thought it worked really well. The uh, using up the rest of the 435 US composite resin. Uh, I didn't put quite enough light in it, and I don't have very great lighting in here. You can see a lot of these. Uh, I don't know how much of it is the ballast or just the bulbs themselves going out. Anyway, lighting's kind of bad in here. I have that work light set up. I hope it doesn't look too terrible on the camera, lighting-wise. But uh, I had the flash turned on. That seemed to help a little bit. Anyway, the uh, second coat was a little bit easier. I used the milled fibers to thicken it up. And it seemed to... It ran a tiny bit in here, somewhat, you can see. And uh, since I didn't have the PVA, I just used the... I used Rust-Oleum Clear Enamel Gloss. And it seemed to do pretty good, tack-free. It looks wet right now, but it's, uh, it's got a pretty good little gloss to it. I like it, even if the oil didn't hold up. Uh, the gel coat's tack-free underneath. That's what really matters. Uh, well, I'm starting on the flotation foam now. On this side, I just wanted to show how I'm doing it. I have these tapered edges here. These are two-inch little pieces. I got about as long as I could so that I could still uh, reach under there as good as I can without a... Uh, breaking the foam it has a little bit of flex to it but I don't want to snap it and I just put some dabs of hot glue to hold it in uh, not very big like that you can see there just to hold it in place I finding it it's just a little bit easier if uh, I try to get it pushed down where I want it at the back here put a few dabs and if I have to uh, like on both of these I had to Press down a little bit, so let the hot glue harden up first, and you may have to sit there and hold it until the glue dries and holds it in place. Uh, then get the tape measure. Uh, I don't have it with me, but basically you're just trying to get the tape measure kind of like this and see where, how long it is from here to where the corner would meet right there. There's going to be a little bit of a gap under there, but there's a little bit of a gap under here. But I want that water drainage. It's the whole point of even using this foam. On the other side, you see I have a this glued in. First one was two inch, and the second layer is two and a half inch. And once I get it to where it's all square, just going from stringer to stringer, uh, I'm probably going to switch uh, from hot glue and just use something to kind of sandwich it together, just to hold it in place. I might use liquid nails. Doesn't exactly matter what they use. I think they make a very specific adhesive for this, but I'm not going to go out of my way to buy it. it it's really just to hold it in place, and once the deck's on, it shouldn't really be going anywhere. Anyway, I just thought I'd uh, show that before I continue to layer on. If you wanted to know how this process looks like, it's pretty easy and self-explanatory. Okay, I forgot to uh, make a video of it, but you can see flotation foam is done. Ran out of the pink foam, and I used about half a sheet more of the blue foam, so in total I used close to one and a half sheet. I still have... That left over stacked over there, a little bit of pink under there, but not bad. Uh, there's not much foam on the bottom of this hole anyway since it's so shallow. Anyway, uh, I can see I got the uh, deck. Uh, one sheet is just barely going to be enough for me to uh, do this. This is uh, at the uh, widest point from here to here is uh, 70 inches. And it, there's a little bit of a taper as it goes back. I wasn't sure how much there's going to be. I had a hard time getting it in there with the gun well and with that little uh, control box and trim panel being there. Kind of a pain. But uh, I just got it marked off. You can see just a little sharpie mark right there, that little black spot. That's what that is. Mark stuff off, start just cutting a little bit. The trouble I'm having, and uh, let's see if you can see that okay. There's that jagged edge of the deck where when I took a lot of this off, some of the cuts were kind of ripped a little bit of the fiberglass at first, prying out the floor and everything when it was rotten. So uh, what I'm going to have to do a little bit on both sides, you can see uh, there's about one inch mark right here, kind of stuff like that. So that way it'll uh, go around these uh, wider spots and hopefully make this to where it'll fit up at least close enough I can peanut butter it. Uh, otherwise there's going to be some, some one to one and a half inch gaps there so hopefully that'll help quite a bit. I don't know how I would fill such a huge gap like that. But I do like that and uh, then on the uh, 
cocktail spots. I just have some easy little stuff to do. Also have to do, I'll do the ski locker. I'll start measuring that out after I get the rest of it fit pretty good because I don't know how far I need to cut back on the ski locker and exactly where it's going to line up. And uh, here in the middle, that's where the uh, floor drain is in between those ribs. I'm going to go ahead and keep the original floor drain for extra ventilation and in case uh, it's a little bit faster drainage if I ever take water over the top or even just someone standing there dripping. I'll have somewhere to go. I'm not sure, uh, since the original deck was half inch, and this sits, this is three quarter, sits up a little bit higher. So, uh, what I'm worried about is water collecting right here because it won't have any else really where to go unless I put tiny holes there or something. That or uh, where the drain hole is, I could uh, use a router or something and kind of taper the whole thing out so there, hopefully everything will drain there. I'm not really sure. I'm going to think on that just a little bit. Anyway, that's where I'm at right now. I wanted to show that uh, I got this thing done with uh, about four coats of polyurethane, how much I had. Took a quart, and a quart was really stretching, and uh, if I'd bought a full gallon, that probably would have been better, but just for underneath the deck, I was just wanting to help the water not soak into the wood so easy. The first coat, I thin thinned about 50% with just regular paint thinner mineral spirits, and it really soaked in those first two coats. Uh, first time, it just really went down all the it won't really go past that first layer of ply because the glue but you can see this is a four ply plywood so it's pretty good penetrating coat just at least help it and it's never going to see uv light so it shouldn't worry too much about degrading in any way even if it does degrade the deck will still be able to breathe and the idea is just to keep it dry i'm not going to put any screws in this deck this philosophy i'm going to keep with i'm about to go with the uh PL construction glue. I got some car batteries laid out. And uh, oh, by the way, it was a pain in the butt getting this big piece out of the deck with the gunwale still there. I'm going to have someone help me this time get it in there. I'll just make things go a lot smoother having someone on the other side. Uh, I have the PL glue and I just have, it says about 30 minute working time with it. So I'll put that down. I have a bunch of car batteries and some weights. Might grab a couple more cinder blocks, but just make sure it's weighted down really good. And uh, you could see where I was talking about earlier how much uh, I do a little bit of fabricating. It wasn't terrible. It was hard because I couldn't get this thing out once I got it in, at least not by myself. So I was sticking a block of wood under parts of the stringers just to hold it off. And then going real carefully with the saws, I yeah, had a little bit of step up cut, but it fits to where the smallest gap now is quarter inch right there. Had to taper it a little bit on the sides, like right there. That also helped it come out once I was done. And you got these port and starboard pieces. On the other side of this plywood, uh, I'm happy with the grade of the plywood I got. There's a, the top ply is a, looks a little bit stuck. <clears throat> well, anyway, I was gonna show you, I'll get it. I have to grab a uh, screwdriver or something real quick, ply that back up, but no knots on the top side. It's a pretty nice looking plywood. In a way, that's uh, what I got going today. I just wanted to show that yesterday I got a little bit of help to help me manhandle the deck because the PL Premium has about 30 minutes working time. Uh, anyway, the deck is, it's been about 24 hours and it's glued in. Um, got a pretty tight fit for the most part. That's right in there. That's about the widest gap I have right there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure I'm going to close it, but maybe stuff caught in balls or something in there. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Uh, as far as the uh, little deck seams go, uh, some of those seams are pretty excellent. Very good. I'm going to need a little bit of fairing on the other side especially, but right there that's actually very flush. And uh, I'm going to keep the weights on this for a couple more days just to be safe. Might as well make sure it gets a full, uh, full cure. It turned a little bit colder last night. Uh, so I'll walk around and show you. Other side need a little bit of fairing. Kind of had to beat on it to get it in place just perfectly. I guess there's a little bit of a curve to it. Uh, I don't know how visible that is, but uh, I guess compared to the outside of the ski locker, there's about an eighth of an inch gap. Not bad at all, really. Uh, I'm probably just going to do 
a four or six inch tape with this call it good uh car batteries or boat batteries and this specifically uh seem to work pretty well for weighting down the deck i uh, use some other stuff like instead of just putting cinder blocks directly on it just bucket of oil with cinder block over it some old uh boat trailer tires bucket of springs just kind of drugged half the barn in there once i got this thing glued down even some clay pigeons down there just want to provide good even clamping pressure and never worry about having to do this again hopefully